Hey, Algebra 2 Honor students, today is going to be Unit 9, Day 5 on Rational Inequalities Algebraically. So yesterday we got a quick look into what Rational Inequalities graphically looks like, and today algebraically, it's going to be a very similar process in terms of what we are looking at breaking the graph up around, except we're just not going to necessarily have the graph in front of us. We can check some of these graphically if we need to, but algebraically, here's what we need to do. We need to set our inequalities to zero, just like I showed you in the graphical sense yesterday. Setting it to zero makes our job much easier because then we can compare to see when the graph is positive or negative, which only makes sense when you're comparing something to zero. Step two, find what I call the critical values. And the critical values are those same things we were looking at on the graphs yesterday, the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes, which they might have multiple depending on the inequality. And to find the x-intercepts, you're essentially just setting the top or the numerator equal to zero. And the reason why you're allowed to do that is when a rational function is equal to zero, it's because the top of the fraction equals zero. Whatever makes the bottom equal to zero, we have vertical asymptotes there, and we can include those in our end solution. So those will become points that we partition around in step three. Once you've decided your critical values, place them on a number line and then test values to see where you are positive and where you are negative. So for this first example, the nice thing is that the inequality is already set to zero. There's nothing additional we have to do there to make that happen. So to find where we cross the x-axis, you would set the numerator equal to zero. So if I sub solve this real quick, you'll get x equals negative a half. That's going to be one point that we partition around in just a moment. If I set the denominator equal to zero, x plus three equals zero, would give you a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. And like I said over here, it's an x int. And the reason why I think that's important to point out the difference is depending on the inequality sign, if we can include equal to zero, which in this one we can't, then we would include the x-intercept as a part of our solution. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead over here and plot those on a number line, those critical values. And what do we have? Negative three and negative a half. They will both have open circles. So one thing is that the vertical asymptote is always open, can never include it. The x-int, like I said, depends on the inequality sign here. Let's test some values. If I test something to the left of negative three, like negative four, I'm plugging in negative four for both those x's. Two times negative four plus one is a negative number. Negative four plus three is a negative number. Negative divided by negative is positive. Let's keep going along the way and then we'll see in the end what we wanna shade. In between negative three and negative half, like negative one, two times negative one is negative two, plus one is still a negative number. Negative one plus three is positive. So negative divided by a positive is always a negative number. Then if I test something to the right of negative a half, I like zero out here. Two times zero plus one is positive and zero plus three is positive, making that last region altogether positive. Now, if I think about based on what we saw graphically and in prior units with partitioning anyway, we're looking for negatives, aren't we? We're looking for when this is less than zero. So what I can now do is shade everything between negative three and negative a half and write my final solution set here because I would like you to write a solution set. The solution is everything from negative three to negative one half. Can include either of those, never include the vertical asymptote, but if this said less than or equal to zero, then I would put a little bracket right there. I'm only gonna check this one graphically. I won't check many others, but let's check this one graphically just to make sure that we are on the right track to get started. If you do alpha y equals, you can make a fraction in y1 where we put two x plus one in the numerator and then x plus three in the denominator. Once you have that typed in, I'm going to hit zoom six to just double check here. And it appears like even though, of course, the calculator won't draw a vertical line at negative three, that is where the vertical asymptote is. I can even tell that the root is at negative a half. If I want to double check that second trace, I can calculate that zero, go to the left of the zero, go to the right of the zero, hit enter. And if I hit enter for the guess, yeah, negative 0.5. So those are some things that after you solve algebraically, you can check in on graphically to make sure that we're on the right track. All right, let's try another one. So for number two, I'm gonna give you x plus one over x minus three is greater than or equal to negative two. Okay. So a little bit different than the last one in that this is not set to zero. So we do have to start this by moving the two to this side, x plus one 
over x minus three with a plus two now on the side is greater than or equal to zero. Now, here's the deal. We cannot at this point decide x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes until this is one combined fraction. Okay, so I'm gonna put that as two over one. And right now I'm going to add those together by getting a common denominator. That's an important step, isn't it? So if I write two as multiplying it by x minus three on the top and the bottom, now we have a common denominator established such that if I distribute that two, we would get two x plus the one x over here for a total of three x. And then we would have negative six plus this one is a total of minus five there over x minus three. This is the inequality that we're now gonna find the critical points for, the critical values. Okay, so that's a little bit more algebra to consider to get started, set it to zero, but then you need a common denominator to get this into one fraction. That's an important step. Now that I have that established, I know that the x int is gonna come from the top equaling zero. So that would be x equals 5 thirds when you solve. The vertical asymptote would be from the denominator. If x minus three equals zero, then x equals three. And one quick point about these is because this is an equal to zero example, this critical point can be a closed circle, but the vertical asymptote is definitely open, no matter what. So when I go over to set up my number line to do my partitioning here, we've got five thirds and we've got three on the number line. At five thirds, just to make sure that I don't forget about it in the end, I'm gonna put a closed circle. We can include that root, but the vertical asymptote definitely can include it. Put an open at x equals three. All right, let's do some quick testing here. If I pick something to the left, how about zero? You're gonna get negative over negative when I plug in zero for those x's. That all together is positive. In between five thirds and three, just be cautious. Two definitely works. Three times two minus five is a positive number. 2 minus 3 is a negative number, so that all together is negative. Will the signs often alternate in these? I would say oftentimes they will. Don't assume it. I would definitely do the tests. So we got positive at the end there. So I'm looking for where it's greater than 0. So we're looking for positives, which is here and here. Don't forget to write your solution in interval notation from negative infinity to 5 thirds. Include it. Union 3 to infinity. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to get the idea here of how to do this algebraically. You can confirm that graphically if you want at this point. In fact, I think I stole this from yesterday's lesson graphically. So if you look back at the lesson, you might see that same graph somewhere in the inequalities graphically. All right, let's just do a couple more. Let's make things a little bit more interesting. We're going to put a quadratic on top. x squared minus x minus 6 over x minus 1 we're gonna figure out where is that greater than or equal to zero, okay? So for this one to get started, I'm going to go ahead and factor the numerator. That would be x minus three and x plus two as factors. And the reason why I think it's nice to factor the numerator is remember what we're partitioning around are the values that make the top equal to zero. Those are your x-intercepts. We have multiple this time. So when I think about the x-intercepts, they're gonna be at x equals three and at x equals negative two. My x-intercepts, because this function can, this inequality can equal zero, these are gonna be both closed circles. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals positive one. That's what makes the bottom undefined. That has to be open though. So it wasn't too bad to get started. It was already set to zero, but Keep in mind, based on what you have in the numerator and denominator, you might have multiple accents. Maybe you'll have multiple vertical asymptotes to partition around. Okay, so when I put these on the number line, we got negative two, one, and three. One and three. You just have to make sure when you do the partitioning, you plug into all three factors. So if I test negative three, negative three minus three is negative. Negative three plus two is negative. And on the bottom, negative three minus one is negative. Let's see if we can figure out what this is all together. So negative times negative is positive. Positive over negative is negative. So just carefully make sure you're going through those signs and considering is the region negative or positive. Oh, by the way, these are both closed circles. The x equals one here is an open circle. All right, let's pick something in between negative two and one. How about zero? Zero minus three is negative. 
Zero plus two is positive, zero minus one is negative. Top is negative when I multiply those, negative over negative is positive. Will these signs alternate? Time will tell. Test x equals two, two minus three is negative, two plus two is positive. Two minus one on the bottom is positive. Negative on top over positive is negative. Last but not least, if I test four, you will get three positives, plus, plus, plus. And altogether, if everything's positive, it better be a positive number. So the signs, maybe to no surprise here, did alternate. So if I do my, let's see, shading, I want to greater than zero, so we want positives. That's everything in here, everything to the right of three. Just make sure you're using the appropriate interval notation for our solution. So we got bracket negative two to one, parentheses, and then union three to infinity. Just really pay attention to what signs you're using there. It's really easy to make a mistake with that, okay? But it's something that I think we should be able to, if we're paying attention, do with ease. One more, I think, to go for today, just one more for practice. Let's do x squared minus three x plus two all over x minus three. And then I'm gonna say that that's less than or equal to x plus two. Okay, so last one I think will probably will be the most complicated case, at least just getting set up. When we get to the partitioning point, it won't be too challenging, but to get set up, since this is not set to zero, you have to move these terms over and get going there. So if I say x squared minus three x plus two over x minus three, I'm gonna subtract x and subtract two to the other side and let this be less than or equal to zero. Okay. So in order to continue from here, you have to get a common denominator. We have to combine these into one fraction so I can figure out what makes the top zero and what makes the bottom zero for our critical values. I'd almost have you treat this as a plus negative x minus two. I think that's gonna make your job a little bit easier. And beyond that, negative x minus two, treat that as one kind of whole binomial there. So here's what we got. If I multiply by x minus three, on the top and the bottom. I get x squared minus three x plus two over x minus three. Plus, when I multiply these together, what do I get? Well, if I do the FOIL, I'm gonna get negative x squared plus three x minus two x would combine for plus x in the middle. And negative two times negative three is a plus six all over x minus three. And now that I have those common denominators established, I can combine like terms in the numerator. X squared and negative X squared go away. Negative three X plus X, that's negative two X. Two plus the six is a plus eight. Over X minus three is less than or equal to zero. Okay, now that we have this, this looks much simpler than what I started with. In fact, notice how by combining the terms here, the X squareds went away. So that's kind of nice in that I now have something linear on top and bottom. If I set the top to zero, to get the x-intercept, I would subtract eight to the other side. So just be careful here, you get x equals positive four, which by the way will be a closed circle. The vertical asymptote is gonna be the denominator equals zero at x equals three. That's gonna be an open circle. So come on over here to your number line just one more time today. Three and four, those values we're partitioning around. We've got open at three, closed at four. Let's test zero. Plug in zero to the top and bottom. You get a positive eight on top. Zero minus three is negative. So this first sign out front is negative. Okay. Moving on from there. So if I test 3.5, negative two times 3.5. That's gonna be negative seven, so plus eight is still positive. And then negative 3.5 minus three, why am I doing this wrong, let's see. 3.5, if I double that, that's positive. Hmm. And then the bottom is positive too? Okay, that's correct. Wow, just had a moment there, guys, where my brain left me for a second. I was like, is this really right? Yeah, okay, sorry, that's fine. Positive or positive, that's what I expected to get. 
All right, I'm with you. Just one more test. Test five, that's going to be negative on top, right? Negative 10 plus 8 is a negative number. And 5 minus 3 is positive, so now this last region is negative. Okay, I think I guess I'm just used to getting, I don't know, positive, negative, positive instead. I don't know, my brain was playing tricks on me. What am I looking for? Less than zero is the negative section out here and the negative section out there. So your solution is negative infinity up till three, parentheses, union, bracket forward to infinity. Okay, so we'll do some more inequalities algebraically next time we're in class together. So let me know if you have any questions about the process. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.